I'm Caitlin Bookwalter, the Director of Family Ministries, and I'm so excited to tell you about all of our fun events this summer. For youth group, every Wednesdays, we are going to have youth fun days. Some of them are going to be missions, where we will serve the church and serve our community, while others will be fun days, like maybe a baseball game or we go kayaking. Also for youth this summer, we have our mission trip where we will be going to Hayesville, North Carolina, where we will be doing construction work on some homes. We are so excited to um, be going out of state this summer for the mission trip. Uh, it is July 31st through August 5th. This summer we also have Serve, which is our local youth mission week, where we will serve local missions here in Ormond and Daytona. That week is for rising 6th graders, so just completed 5th graders through our rising 12th graders. We are excited to be able to go back to Beachside Elementary and hopefully um, our partners of Hope Place and Beacon Center. This summer we have Kids Adventure Week, which is June 20th through the 24th. That is just completed pre-K-4 through just completed fifth grade. We are excited to be going um, on a food truck party. So be on the lookout for food trucks this summer as you will become chefs and we will work through stories of the Bible dealing with food as the kids learn God is great, God is good. Let us thank him for our food. By our hands, we all are fed. Thank you, Lord, for our daily bread. We are excited that we are returning to Warren Willis Camp this summer, overnight camp for 4th through 12th graders. We will be going the last week of June, which for camp is week 2. If you have any questions, please reach out to Pastor Scott or myself. We do have scholarships for it, and we don't want anybody not to go to camp just because you cannot pay for it. It is a life-changing experience where children will deepen their faith and discover hope as they learn about God through many fun different ways this summer as the topic is love is. First United, we need adults and youth to serve this summer during Kids Adventure Week, June 20th through the 24th for Food Truck Party. We need volunteers to help in science, crafts, games, snack, and Bible story, as well as music. Or you can help lead the children around so you get to experience all of it. You can sign up on the website under forms. If you have any questions, please email me at cbookwalter at firstunited.org or call the church office.
United is in an extraordinary position where we can be a phenomenal lead investor in our community. You know, we've established uh, seven different investment areas that, that we're going to focus in as a church. You know, we can do things like really curb homelessness in our community, and we can feed the hungry, and we can help people climb the ladder economically. Uh, we can end drug addiction uh, in our community. We can, you know, help people have clean water here and around the world. Uh, those are, you know, phenomenal tools that we can actually employ. Um, but we need funding to do it. First United in 2017, our church came up with a goal of giving away as much as we spend on ourselves to organizations and ministries around our community and the world to build God's kingdom. We're in the process of living into that. So this year's goal is $400,000. Our mission giving team has got different organizations and groups that we're partnering with uh, to give this money away. We do this because we have been blessed. We see the blessings that we have been given at, to go and bless others. And it's an investment in the kingdom of God. We take this money and we, we give it. And there's a return on that investment. When we give to help these other organizations, we're realizing that God's at work in bigger and better ways than even we can imagine. Imagine, and we are so proud to be able to partner with these different groups. And I'm excited about your faithfulness and giving that allows us this opportunity to reach beyond our walls to build God's kingdom here. So every dollar you give is an investment in the kingdom of God. And the returns, while well, you may not be getting money back, I promise you, that doesn't happen, but your life will change. More importantly, other lives will change because you were faithful. Thanks so much. Good morning, First United. For those of you who don't know me, I am uh, Tammy Hagel. I am the Director of Worship here, uh, filling in for Linda. She's a little under the weather today, so if you could just keep her in your prayers, hopefully she'll be back with us next week. We'd like to take a moment for you to connect with us with the connection cards. That's those QR code on the screen in front of you or in the pews in front of you, or if you need a little additional help, we have a lapt uh, computer in the lobby that you can we can help you uh, just let us know that you're worshiping with us. If you're participating online, we would love it if you would let us know you're watching on Facebook. Just type your name in and let us know you're with us. But uh, we're glad you're here. We're going to ask you to stand, and Jerry is going to lead us in the hymns this morning. <laughs>
in our modern affirmation of faith. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed in his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as a divine presence in our lives, whereby we have kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in a time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end. The kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Glory be to the Father, First United in the Gathering Place. Today I want you to meet some friends of mine. It's the Brody Show. First off, I'm here with Brody Ochippa. Brody will soon graduate from Seabreeze High School. Fear the pinch, baby. And then he heads off to college. Uh, Brody, I forget. Where where are you going? Florida State University. That's right, Florida State, Florida State, Florida State. Woo! Go Knowles! But we're not here to talk about that. That's just an extra bonus for you. Uh, Brody's been involved in a lot of things here at First United. He's attended Vacation Bible School back when we called it that. Then he volunteered every year at Kids Adventure. You were running like uh, the games portion, weren't you? Yeah. Uh, and he's been in youth group, mission trips, church lunch, back when we were doing church lunch before COVID, and more. And he's receiving one of our church scholarships as well. But Brody, what are some memories you have from being here at First United? I've always loved being a part of Rooted Student Ministries and doing all of the fun summer activities and the fun day trips that we take throughout the year and all the big service community weeks we do. I didn't, I didn't hear me in there, Brody. And I love you, too. Thank you. Thank you. I love you, too. Sometimes you have to beg for it. Uh, all these events and memories, I mean, Brody's been with us for years, are possible because you gave of your resources, making it possible for First United to create places and spaces for Brody and for others to connect with God and each other. Yes. Thank you, First United, for all you've done. You've made a difference in my life and helped me on my journey of faith. Thanks, Brody. And now on to our second Brody of the day. All right, folks, I'm here with Brody number two. I'm here with my main man, good friend, Brody Robinson. Brody is in the fourth grade at Tomoka Elementary. He's a baseball player extraordinaire. What positions do you play? Second and outfield and, and then, pitcher. And then I heard uh, today, not only are you, you play second outfield and pitcher all at the same time? No. <laughs> but he also just told us you ran how far today? Five and a half miles. miles. Five and a half miles, and how fast? Um, in 40 minutes. 40 minutes. So, an athlete in the making right here. Uh, Brody is not only active at uh, Tomoka Elementary, but he's active in our children's ministry here at First United with Sunday Morning Wave, uh, Kids Adventure Week, and more. 
So Brody, what are some of the things you love about coming to First United? Some things I love about First United is Adventure Week Sunday School and watching the service on TV. You like watching the service on TV? Yeah. I look good on TV, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Listen, like with Brody Ochippa, uh, we can have these ministries for children and youth because you are faithful in your finances. Thanks for putting God first in your finances, which allows us to share the love of Jesus with the Brodies and more. Let's pray. Brody, why don't you pray us out? Okay. God, we give you thanks for all you have given us. Please accept our gifts and use them to build your kingdom here. Thank you for all First United does for children and youth. It is a great place to learn about Jesus. Amen. 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 Right, Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Give it up for the Brodies. They did a good job. Well, my name is Amy Armistead. I am the pastor of the Gathering Place, and some of you might be, hold on, we got a little, is that working? Ooh, that's a little scratchy, isn't it? Well, I could be loud for now until we get this figured out. My name is Amy Armistead. A lot of you probably haven't seen me in a while because I've been over in the LPGA area at Westside Elementary School, and Scott and I have done a pulpit swap, which means he's preaching over there in the last
Hi, my name is Bertie Ochippa, and I'm graduating from Seabreeze High School this year, and I'm looking forward to attending Florida State University. I am very excited to see Pastor Scott at some FSU football games in the upcoming years, and I look forward to all the things I will learn through my education. I'd like to thank all of First United for all you've done throughout the years and all of the ways that each of you have touched my heart. Hello, I'm Christopher Kennedy, and I'm graduating Spruce Creek High School to go to Stetson University. Hi, my name is Taylor Gray. I will be attending the University of North Florida this fall in Jacksonville. Um, I'll be studying speech therapy, and I'll try and put into words how much this place means to me. I just want to thank the congregation for the past 14 years and all of the like the sense of community, the family. I've laughed and cried with most of y'all here and just so much generosity and tradition and it just all of it is so genuine. Um, but <laughs> this place will always feel like home because of First United, from Sunday School, or VBS, and Warren Willis, and just all of it, their memories that I'll hold dearly forever. So thank you. Um, I could just give a special shout out, I guess, to Miss Maria. I just talked to her outside the door, and she has always made me feel like I was one of her own, along with Miss Delaney and all the other women who really influenced me at Sunday School. Pastor Scott, of course, he's helped me come out of my shell a lot and all the other grandmas and grandpas that come up to me talking about <laughs> how much I've grown up and you guys just really make me feel welcome so thank you. I would like to introduce Sarah Maller. She is graduating from Spruce Creek High School summa cum laude from the IB program. Sarah enjoyed participating in track and field as a high jumper and was captain of her varsity flag football team. Sarah will be attending the University of Florida, pursuing a bachelor's in science of applied physiology and kinesiology. Sarah would like to thank her family and friends for supporting her, as well as her church for everyone's support and guidance throughout her childhood and on. Go Gators. Hello, my name is Cooper Dunn. I've been going to the church now since I was a child. Um, I plan on going to the University of Florida to study aerospace engineering to hopefully one day work at NASA or SpaceX. Um, I'd like to thank my parents for helping me throughout this journey and supporting me. Um, also, youth group for allowing me to create new friends and have fun experiences at summer camp and VBS when I was a little child. Um, anyways, go Gators. Hi, my name is Charlotte Harris. I will be graduating from Seabreeze High School this year, and I will be going to University of Florida in the summer. I'm going to be studying chemical engineering, and I'd just like to thank the church for being such a supportive and welcoming community. Go Gators! <laughs> Yeah. 
Holy God, may the words from my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So like I said earlier, it has been a while since you saw this face up here. Uh, Again, I'm Amy Armistead, the pastor of The Gathering Place, which is the new expression of First United out in the LPGA area. And while we have First United Methodist DNA, our mission at The Gathering Place is to welcome everybody, to gather differently and love abundantly, so that people might encounter God and others in new and meaningful ways. And Scott and I have had on our calendar for months now this pulpit swap. So he has been over at Westside Elementary while I'm here with you this morning. But I find it very suspicious that Scott has tasked me with preaching the giving topic of this sermon series. Very suspicious indeed. So thanks a lot, Scott. And The Gathering Place is currently in a series called Can I Ask That in Church? where we have asked folks from our community to submit their questions that they have about faith and scripture and God. And we received over 40 submissions, big questions like, does God forgive our doubts? Or will I be reunited with loved ones in heaven? And uh, why are there so many denominations? And my personal favorite, can I still cuss when I get to heaven? So yeah, we're tackling the big topics over there. But because Scott challenged me with this giving sermon, I left him with the theme of original sin. So good luck with that gathering place. So like we've been uh, talking about, First United has been in a sermon series called Five Smooth Stones, where we are looking at ways to deepen our connection to God. And in the story of David and Goliath, David uses five smooth stones to defeat the giant. And we're, we're talking about and digging deeper into these spiritual practices to bridge the gap between what it looks like to be an uninterested Christian and a committed, energized follower of Christ. Now, there is no secret recipe, no undiscovered new thing. I mean, folks have been, devoted people of faith have been using these steps for centuries, and they're all over scripture. The five smooth stones are worship, pray, serve, grow, give, and share. And we we count worship and prayer as, as one thing. Now, I've been poking fun at this whole giving topic, but the truth is that in the past week, I have had conversations with two separate people about how they don't like it when churches talk about money. It, it comes off kind of as a sales pitch, or it makes folks uncomfortable. And I've also heard stories of other churches who have locked the doors And don't let their folks out until they reach their goal of a certain giving for a ministry initiative. So I promise Tammy and Terry aren't in the back with a deadbolt. That will not be our strategy. At both First United and The Gathering Place, we've been showing these giving videos, like the one you just saw, the the Brody and Brody show. (laughs) Uh, Because we kind of had a come to Jesus moment where we realized we were talking a lot about how to give and not really anything about why we give. 
So we've, we've, in the past couple months, discussed passages like Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Or, or Luke 6, 38, where it says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. So if uh, we are blessed to be a blessing is what that topic is saying. And we've talked about how tithing is not just a gift to the church, but an act of worship. Without tithes and offerings, the important work happening here with our children, our youth, our our presence over in the LPGA area, and supporting community partners like Halifax Urban Ministries, the Beacon Center, and our partners in Kenya, to name a few, would not be possible. But when we see giving as a gift that we give ourselves by nurturing this spiritual discipline, the giver is the one who is blessed. Now, I wanted to challenge myself and this community to look at not just the topic of giving, but living a life of generosity in a new way, or at least using a a Bible passage that we don't see in the typical church capital campaign. It's the story of Ruth and Naomi. And the story begins with Naomi, a Jewish woman married to a guy named Elimelech. I cannot promise that I'll say that perfectly each time. Uh, But married to Elimelech, Elimelech from Bethlehem. And they have two sons who marry non-Jewish Moabite women named Orpah, not Oprah, not Oprah Winfrey, Orpah and Ruth. In a span of 10 years, Naomi loses her husband and both of her sons. And she encourages her widowed daughter-in-laws to return to Moab and to remarry, to, to get on with their lives. And Orpah obeys. However, Ruth refuses, telling Naomi this. Do not press me to leave you, to turn back from following you, because where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do thus to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So Naomi returned together with Ruth, Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, who came back with her from the country of Moab. They came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. So here we see Ruth, who is generous in her taking care of her widowed mother-in-law, Naomi, and Naomi's family legacy. She refuses to abandon Naomi, even though she is released from that obligation. And Naomi is generous in her adoption of Ruth and her willingness to return alongside her to Bethlehem. And then comes a guy named Boaz. And Boaz was a prominent rich man related to Naomi's former husband, Elimelech. And Boaz, he's wealthy, he is a a prominent man in his community, and he's a a a landowner with many servants. And Ruth and Naomi arrive in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. And Ruth decides, well, if I'm going to make it out here, i got to make a little money. So she decides to go and work in the fields, hoping that she would find someone's favor. And Boaz, he notices her. And after learning of her story and hard work from a servant, He tells Ruth to stay in his field where she can work unbothered. Why is that important? Where she could work unbothered. 
because it was very dangerous for a foreigner, a Moabite woman, to be working in the fields. It made her susceptible to men who would prey on her because she was, was different. She was not one of them. Because of this, she was overwhelmed by his generosity and his promise of protection. So she falls to the ground and asks him, Why have I found favor in your sight that you should take notice of me when I am a foreigner? But Boaz answered her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me. How you left your father and mother and your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. May the Lord reward you for your deeds, and may you have a full reward from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings have come for refuge. Then she said, may I continue to find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant even though I am not one of your servants. You see, here Boaz is generous in his protection and support of Ruth. Remember, he is a, a respected community member and landowner, and Boaz uses to, chooses to use his wealth and power to protect someone in need of harm and violence and hunger. It says that after a day of work in the fields, Ruth brought home an epa, I know I'm saying that wrong, epa, of barley, which is the equivalent, roughly, of a bushel. And because I am not a pilgrim, I had to look up what a, a, how many pounds is a bushel of barley, and it comes out to around 48 pounds, so roughly the size of my English shepherd, Nora. So that's a lot of barley that she, she brought home in one day. And taking a, a risk on helping Ruth, Boaz is bridging the opportunity gap between those who have access to resources and those who don't. He uses his power and his privilege for good, to lift, to empower someone up. And this begs the question... How do we use our power? How do we bridge the gap so others might have access? Or maybe the question is, has anyone bridged the gap for you? Maybe it was a teacher, a mentor, a friend of the family, a pastor, a church grandma who taught you the right way like Taylor said in her video. And I wonder if generosity is such a hard thing to talk about because giving takes risk. There is a risk in sharing your resources, specifically your financial resources, to those in need. I mean, those questions bubble up. How will the money be spent Will it go to things that matter? Will my money actually make a difference? And generosity in the book of Ruth takes place in the midst of great risk. Naomi, she risks shame and dejection by returning to her home country to give Ruth and Naomi a better chance at surviving. Ruth risks slavery, abuse, sexual violence by going to work in the fields as a Moabite woman, a foreigner, with workers who might harm her in order to provide for Naomi and her family. Boaz, he risks ridicule and status because he put his neck on the line for a woman he didn't know. A woman who sacrificed working for the two of them in order to eat and live. And we cannot hear the story of Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz without understanding the great risks each of them take by being exceedingly generous. The book of Ruth ends with Boaz taking Ruth as his wife so that the family line of Naomi might be redeemed 
with Ruth and Boaz later having a son named Obed, taken care of by mother-in-law Naomi. And Obed is the father of Jesse, who is the father of King David, who is in the ancestral line of King Jesus, Savior of the world. But Ruth wouldn't have known that, would she? We do not know what impact our generosity will have down the road. In giving, we may never see the fruits of the seeds planted long ago. And I can't help but think of the families who 20 years ago generously gave for the, the purchase of the Williamson property who might not still be around to see the birth of the gathering place and all the, the cool things that have been going on. And I think of the money given to the Beacon Center, which is uh, Volusia County's only intimate violent shelter, shelter uh, to build that playground. And, and now we're working on a project to renovate the kitchen. And because of the confidential nature of a domestic violence shelter, we don't see the smiles on those kids' faces as they play on that playground, getting to experience just a moment of normalcy and joy. We might not get to see those smiles, but we, as a community, gave because we knew it was the right thing to do. And then I, I think of the $20,000 that First United just raised, which comes up to about $40,000 because of a matching gift, for our partners in Kenya. Now, Inua is a ministry in Kenya that works to expand opportunities for vulnerable youth to overcome poverty, illness, malnutrition, insecurity, and to achieve long-term sustainability. And my hunch is, my guess is that not many of you have purchased a round trip ticket to Kenya to go see with your very own eyes all the good work that that money is contributing towards. But you trust, you have faith that that is making a difference in the lives of those kids because we believe as a community that those kids matter. So you gave because of that. Now, the story of Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz is also a story of redemption, of things being made right. This is our story. This is the story of our faith in Jesus, like we sang about just a few moments ago. This is our story. And it's the story of an ancestral line going all the way back to Ruth. And she may never have known that taking the risk of generosity, Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz, would make the life-changing difference that it has today, even in our own lives. You see, we join in God's holy work to heal brokenness, to share love and mercy, and to bring about peace and justice. And how do we do this kingdom work? How do we step into this kingdom work that spans ancestries and spans generations? By being generous with what we have. And part of our mission at The Gathering Place is to love abundantly. And that means we don't have a mentality of scarcity but even with limited resources that come with being a scrappy new little church start, we live into loving abundantly. Through the generosity of so many, including the First United family, we have been able to do some pretty cool things. I think about our Read Aloud with Partners program, where anywhere uh, each week between 14 and 20 students read aloud with a tutor to improve on their literature skills. If you think about, we, we paired them with second graders, and you think about what happened two years ago when they were in kindergarten. A pandemic happened that shifted education 
drastically. So those second graders needed a, a boost in, in helping learn how to read. So we have volunteers both here at First United and at the Gathering Place and even community members who spend an hour a week with these kids. And then I think about our community garden. That's Farmer Bob over there. He's a, a Margaritaville resident, uh, also a, a farmer with his six little mini farmers who have revitalized the Westside Elementary School community garden, which when we got there uh, was just a pile of weeds uh, and even a little snake, which I found as we were pulling those weeds. Uh, and Farmer Bob on Wednesday afternoon uh, teaches those kids, along with his Spruce Creek High School volunteers, how to grow their own food. And then there's the, the Easter egg hunt, which uh, on April 9th we had over 300 students teachers and community members in the West Side area who gathered for an afternoon of fun and Easter egg hunts and uh, snacks. And there you see Josh, who's an Embry-Riddle student, leading the, the sackcloth games. And uh, what you don't see is that kid in the front doing a, a face plant a couple minutes later. <laughs> And then uh, with, with our, you know, limited resources, we, we get to do our kayaks and communion, which is a, a quarterly thing that we do, and we go on Sunday mornings to Tomoka Outpost, and Tomoka Outpost becomes our church. And that's how that we could reach folks who would normally never step into a traditional church setting, but get to experience worship and communion and experiencing God through moving our bodies on kayaks and canoes. So as a community, we come together with what we have, whether that's big or small, and we share it with those in need. This can be many different ways we as a First United family uh, generously give of our gifts. Maybe it's giving of your talents, like the choir and Joe who does an amazing job on the piano and keys and um, giving up of our time to uh, create beautiful music or like Farmer Bob using his knowledge and talents and donating his time to teach kids how to grow their own food. Or we could be generous with our time like the people who get up early and come help set up in the mornings, our, our tech people. We just had a tech training yesterday of uh, all this stuff that we do and, and putting it online, like Brody says he likes watching church on TV, it takes a whole lot of manpower and energy and expertise to do that type of stuff. Or the, the 24 folks who got together at the Beacon Center last weekend and put in some major sweat equity hours. I mean, they were doing hard labor to beautify that campus. And you see you have kids up there, and uh, as young as a two-month-old was giving their time to, to make that a more beautiful place. We could be generous with our prayers, praying sincerely for the hurt, suffering, and healing of our community like we did a couple moments ago for the people of Buffalo. We could be generous with our resources, what we're talking about today. As simple as making a meal and bringing it over to a neighbor or a new parent, or giving of our financial resources by our tithes and offerings so that we could financially help the ministries and help those in our community by supporting local mission partners. Or maybe it's just paying for the person behind you in the Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts line when you grab a, a cup of coffee. Now, I know that the, the Starbucks and, and Dunkin' Donut divide is almost as fierce as the FSU and University of Florida divide. First United and the Gathering Place are already a family of faith that is bursting with generosity. But how can we continue to live into that identity? How can we continue to be exceedingly generous? What are the needs out there? And who has the gifts, time, resources, expertise to help? 
Here is a challenge for you to be generous, even when it means taking risks, to help bridge the opportunity gap in our community. We are asking you to practice five acts of generosity each month. And here are a, a couple ideas how to cultivate a life of generosity. One, bless a friend, a neighbor, or a coworker. Take a meal to a busy family or maybe to a new parent. Helping a neighbor with household tasks or assisting a coworker with a difficult project. Maybe that means supporting a, a local missionary or supporting someone who's doing good work in the community. Number two, Bless a stranger with a random act of kindness. Simple acts, like I said, buying a coffee or, or McDonald's when you're in a drive through line, or how about this, giving a generous tip to servers who sometimes deal with nasty, mean people. They could, that, that tip might make a difference between a good shift and a bad shift, and, and remembering to thank them and to pray for them. And then maybe you can experience giving the gift of generosity in return. It's, it's you who are blessed. And then three, learn more about the needs in your community or in the world. What are you passionate about? What, what sets your heart on fire? What is it that, that breaks your heart and you just are itching to get to work and do something to make a difference? Identify the areas and projects of need that you truly care about because that's what's gonna drive you and share your time, talents, and resources. A great example of this is the Keeches, who have put together a, a box in the back where you get coffee as you walk in. Or I say the back, it's probably the front over there. And they're supporting a missionary who is doing mission work in Japan. And they're trying to raise $2,500 over a span of a year to support this missionary and, t and, and showing people the gospel in another area of the world. So throw a cup of bucks in there in the, in the lobby before you grab a cup of coffee. It's, it's easy. This one is harder. Number four, make regular financial giving a priority. A couple weeks ago, we showed a video of Scott and I and four buckets. And the four buckets is, is your income, what money you have. And then three buckets are spending, spending on your mortgage or spending on fun stuff like Starbucks. Uh, or your utilities and water and light bill. Not fun stuff, but important stuff. Two would be saving. What are you saving for for a rainy day or for retirement? And then three is giving. But usually that giving bucket is last. It's, it's whatever we have left over after our spending bucket and saving bucket. And we've challenged you to reorder those priorities so that God doesn't get the leftovers, the extra but we become intentional in our offerings. And then finally, five, leave a legacy of generosity. A legacy gift is one way to further your generosity and bless future generations. Just like Ruth, Naomi, and Boaz didn't realize the impact that their generosity would have spanning generations all the way to Jesus, who have impacted each of our lives in some way. So help support the church's mission and ministries in the future by leaving behind a gift. Now, a reason we are so uncomfortable with talking about giving in church, and which is probably why Scott challenged me with this sermon in the first place, is that we see it as an obligation to keep the lights on, to keep the AC going, and to pay salaries, which, raise your hand if you like AC. I sure do. All good things, right? But we're not asking for your money. We're asking you to develop a spiritual discipline. Our generosity is a reflection of our spiritual health. That doesn't mean that if you're not giving 10%, then you're, you're failing. It's about taking intentional, small steps to grow in that area of faith. I mean, at, at the gathering place, we have a couple college students and recent college grads, and they're like, ah, I can't give 10%. That's like oh, oh, lots of my salary. And it's, it's not about making that the goal immediately, but taking intentional steps 
to make a plan to get there? Is God an afterthought? Is God getting the leftovers? Or are we being intentional about not just giving, but living a life of generosity? And a life of generosity takes great risk. Like Boaz, Ruth, and Naomi, who all in some way stuck their neck out for the good of others, we can live into God's way. A way that says that there is always enough, there is more than enough, that we don't have to live a mentality of scarcity, but one of abundance. One where we might not always see the fruits of our labor, but we are blessed in the act of giving that will impact generations far after we are gone. And we're about to celebrate this meal right here, which in my mind is a, a reminder of that abundance. It's a reminder that God gave the ultimate gift. Jesus gave everything, not just a, a little bit, but gave it all for us, for us to experience and live into a life of redemption and abundance, where when the world tells us there's not enough, we know that there is more than enough because we serve and know and love a God who can do increasingly more than we could possibly imagine. So on the night where Jesus gathered up all his friends, he took the bread. He gave thanks to you, God blessed it, broke it, and said, take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do so in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, God, blessed it, and said, take and drink. This is my blood given for you for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Holy God, pour out your spirit on all of us gathered here, whether we're gathered here at First United or gathered online in our living rooms or kitchen tables. God, make these gifts of bread and wine be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we can be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Lord, we ask you to make us one. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ returns and finally we feast at his heavenly banquet. And that feast is one of abundance, a table where there is always enough. God, when we are tempted by a mindset of scarcity, that there's just not enough resources, not enough time, not enough money, God, Open our eyes to your abundance and remind us of the ultimate gift that was given. God, your love. In perfect love, you died on that cross for the forgiveness of our sins to offer us new life and to reconcile us with God and others. Let's live into it, God, that we might take great risks of generosity because we believe in a God who can do abundantly more than we could possibly imagine. We ask these things in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. So a couple of instructions before we get up here. For those who might not be familiar, we practice communion through the, the practice of intinction, which means uh, you will be given a, some bread and be offered to dip it in the cup. We have a gluten-free station right over here for those who have allergens. Uh, and we practice an open table which is my favorite part of our theology, that no matter your background, whether you're a member, whether or not you've been baptized, no matter your age, your rap sheet, whatever you've done, this table is welcome to you. Why? Because it's a table of abundance. So come taste and see that the Lord is good.
stand for our closing hymn, To God Be the Glory. glory great things he hath done so loved he the world that he gave us his son who yielded his life and atonement for sin and opened the light gate that all may go in Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory great things he hath done. O perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receive. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater are we. To our transport when Jesus we see, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. It's truly a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Right? I am so thrilled that we could worship together today. Do you feel the call to be like Boaz? Have you thought of that before? Have you, do you feel a calling to be a bridge of generosity and availability of resources? In our day and age, in this community, we are so abundantly blessed, and yet the world wants us to believe that there is scarcity and that we live in a scarcity society. Jesus wants us to not hang on to the water pipe. He wants to let the water of living life flow through us. And the blessings that he so generously entrusts to us, he wants us to let him use them through us. I mean, come on, they were his in the first place, right? We are so blessed to be stewards of so much. I want to challenge you this week to take on intentional worship, intentional giving as a form of worship. Have you ever thought of worship as a, like 
exercising a, a muscle, I want to challenge you to exercise your giving muscle and see what amazing things happen when you let the Lord strengthen you and let that worship flow. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you today thanking you for all you have done for us. We want to glorify you, Lord. We want to glorify you in all that we do. Let us see our lives as a resource for you, Lord. Let us see not our bank account, but things and stuff and resources that you have generously provided so that we can bless others. Lord, let us be faithful to give it away. Let us be faithful to let it flow through because we, even when we are faithful in just a little, Lord, you are faithful in all. We thank you, Lord, for your loving presence and provision. Let us just give back a tiny bit, but consistent. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And I got to say it because Scott's not here. Peace out. <laughs>